Hello, hello, hello. Hello world. How is everybody? This is your host of Aim to Purpose Spiritual Empowerment Hour, Louise Hicks. I am back again with another video for you. So please, please subscribe. Please share. Please give it a thumbs up. Leave it a like. And definitely, I would love to hear your comments. And a few days ago, I did a podcast about Black women who are not yes women. And it was about is voting for Kamala the Black woman's job. And I really appreciate all the shares, all the likes, the comments. And I really thank you and appreciate for your support. And again, I'm this mad Black woman, and that is for motivated and determined to help and support my community to a higher level of consciousness, because I believe that charity starts at home. And as a 73 years of age, mad Black woman, I was so excited about those young women giving their views, giving their strength, showing their courage on what it's, it is like to be a Black woman living in America under these chaotic political, I guess some would call it what we talked about in that particular video, a clown show with Megan the Stallion, or as I called her, Megan the horse, because a stallion is a horse and it's a male horse at that. So with that said, I have another great video for you tonight. I'm going to share my podcast tonight about or today, wherever you are located, about Black men who are not playing games with either party. And it's all about Chicago. And we know the illegal migrants were not just thrown in Chicago by the powers that shouldn't be, the political parties, both Democrats and Republicans. However, the payouts are coming from the party that's in charge now, which happens to be the Democrats. And as you may know or may not know, Kamala Harris was supposedly, she was supposedly the keeper of the border. However, she's not keeping the border because these illegal migrants are coming in by droves, in droves. And guess where they are thrown? They are thrown in the Black communities. What is that telling you? So I am so happy and pleased that Black men have been speaking out. So we're going to talk about our Black men. And this is a topic that's dear to my heart, too, because I have two Black sons that are adults. And it's a disgrace what is going on now with these illegal migrants coming into our country, not citizens, not voting, and they are getting all of this money. They're living in luxury while we have our black homeless people on the streets struggling. And in LA, the homeless capital of the, well, it could be of the world, but I know the homeless capital of America because I live there and I've seen it. And being 73, I've seen a lot. I don't have to go about, go by hearsay or read about it because I've lived a lot of it. And I'm going to share with you now because I'm not going to be in long about the black men who are not playing games with either party and Chicago is going to speak out here and they they are asking as we all are or we should be asking what is the agenda and what are the policies for black America 
we should be asking those questions of both parties. However, these journalists, they aren't asking these questions about the debt that's owed, about the criminal injustice system, because I don't call it a criminal justice system because it's a criminal injustice system. And I'm gonna talk more about that when I share with you my next uh, podcast about uh, the young man out of San Francisco that was sent to prison for six plus years for a crime he didn't commit, was innocent. So I'll be sharing that with you in my next podcast. But for now, let's go ahead and listen to Chicago, where they have thrown all of these migrants, illegal migrants, into the black community and giving them all kinds of perks. So let's let's talk about that. Now let me share with you. Give me a moment here and we are going to share because I really want you to see what's going on with how our politicians are ignoring the blacks and now they want your vote but they don't want to pay the debt and they don't even want to talk about it, but we're going to talk about it and we're going to talk about them too. So let's talk. And black people speak for black. Oh people. yes, sir. Black Americans. Yes, sir. We're not African American. We're not people of color. We're not black and brown minority. That's right. BIPOC, none of, none of that. People, no, none of that. Strict, this is about our people demanding the resources, just as you've given these people, these newcomers who are walking into this country. All right, you're right. And sister is correct. How do you take a new group of people that have paid no taxes, can't vote, and you put them in front of the voters? I'm not gonna pay them no damn taxes. And so we say this to you, Mayor, Governor, President, if you think that they're that powerful, that you have to acquiesce and answer to them over us, then you tell them to vote for you in these next elections. That's right. You tell them to support your Democratic National Convention. And we're going to show you how, how we feel about the Democratic That's National right. Convention. Turn it up. Thank you. If you think you're going to have a peaceful Democratic National Convention in the city of Chicago while our people starve starving, That's right. stay tuned. Okay. Stay tuned. And black people speak. Hear what he said? Yes, sir. Black Americans. And black stay people. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. So let's stop because this black man has spoken and he spoke it well. And we need more of our people to come out and speak out, speak up, because we're not gonna play these games anymore with these politicians, whether it's Democrats or Republicans, whether it's the House, the Senate, or the president, we're not gonna play these games anymore. We need to let them know what our demands are because they're working for us. When you put your vote in, they have a job to do based on you employing them. However, if we demand nothing, we get nothing. There is a debt owed. And that debt is called reparations. And if these politicians can give all of this money to these illegal migrants, they live in luxury hotels, they get free money, free education. And from what I understand, they're getting money to buy homes. They're getting mortgage money. And we as black people who have been under slavery 250 years, and then now we're under Jim Crow, mass incarceration, neglect, and we're not asking for anything for free because this is a debt owed because we are the heirs. And we need to start demanding and stop giving away our vote because that's what we're doing. And I'm so happy to see young black men, millennials, Gen Xers, Zs, I am so proud and happy to see you out demanding 
And for these baby boomers, like I spoke in the last uh, podcast, what kind of example are many of us setting? Because we are voting and we're just voting. Most of us just vote. We just vote blue. We don't care about what they have to offer us for our vote. Many of us baby boomers, we just go, oh, I'm going to vote for the Democrats no matter what. And you keep getting the same results over and over and over. And what is that called? It's called insanity. And again, I'm Louise Hicks, your host of this podcast, Aim to Purpose Spiritual Empowerment Hour. And please subscribe, leave your comments, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. And by all means, share, 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 because we must get the message out that our vote is for sale. It's not free. And we need to stop just voting to be voting. And I don't know whether you've noticed or not, but every time you in social media, you're turning the news on. It's always about what we're doing as Black people. So this is an opportunity now for you to demand something because it appears that they don't, they're not out here pandering to other ethnic groups. You don't see them pandering to the whites, the Asians, the Hispanics, the Indians. They're just pandering and pandering and pandering and pounding and pounding and pounding. It's like we're the only ethnic group that exists in America right now. And we need to just hone in on that opportunity and demand something. A lot of these people are calling themselves journalists. And when they get in front of these politicians, right now we're discussing about the presidential election and they get in front of the, the vice president and the former president and they act like they are afraid to mention the word reparations. We need to find out what are these people going to do? What is your agenda? What about the debt that's owed because we are heirs and our four parents worked for free? And not only did they work for free, they were beaten, raped, hung, just all kinds of atrocities they had to live through. And many of us are sitting back like, oh, we don't, we're not owed anything. Yes, you are. You are an heir. Do you realize that the heirs of on the heirs of slave owners are living off of those benefits today because of legacy and generational wealth? So where is our common sense? Where is our critical thinking skill? We got to start using that with discernment. Ask for nothing, you get nothing. And just giving our vote away year after year after year, every two years, every four years, depending on what uh, election is coming up. We must demand something because apparently these people believe we have something to offer because you don't see them out here pandering to other folks right now. We're the only ones. It's like we're the only ones in America right now. Just black people or everything. You turn on any of even mainstream media. So we have to wake up. And I'm so happy to see black men, young black men, because like I said, I have two black sons and I have a black daughter. And I did the one on women is voting for Kamala Harris, the black woman's job. I did the one on that one. So this one is about black men. And, and black men are tired of playing this political game. And we are, and as black women, we are sick and tired of white supremacists always attempting to put us out front in front of our black men. We have too many intelligent black men that are standing up for what is right in terms of the black community, elevating the black community. And I'm so proud to see the Gen Xers, the Gen Zs, the millennials, they are standing up now and neither one will get our vote. The ones of us who have that 
that sound mind and the mindset to think for yourself because your brain is independent. Nobody owns your brain but you. So it's up to you to vote for who you would desire to be in the office. However, that person needs to have an agenda and some policies that will empower us as black people for getting our vote. Black people want to become entrepreneurs. However, we don't have the resources. And if you go to get a loan from the uh, SBA, you're subject to get turned down. So this is something we need to put an end to because whoever is elected, they need to make sure that these loans and grants are open up for black people who want to start a business to be able to start their own business so that we can hire our people to have jobs. And that way they don't have to go out and keep killing up one another, keep selling drugs, drinking themselves to death, eating themselves to death. So we have to empower ourselves. However, we need the resources that have been stolen with all the free labor that was gotten during slavery. And we gotta stop being afraid. Like I always tell you about 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we gotta start exercising that power and demand, create some demands to empower our black community. They're sending all of these migrants, illegal migrants into the black communities, taking away resources when you have black people that are homeless, no jobs, struggling just to survive. So why are we giving away our vote to these politicians that don't care about, they're not putting them in their neighborhoods. They're not putting them in the white neighborhoods. They're not putting them in the Hispanic neighborhoods. They're not putting them in the Asian neighborhoods. So why are we allowing this to happen to us and taking away all of our resources? And I know, like I said earlier, I'm from California and they're the homeless people and most of them are black. So we got to speak up and speak out and thank you black men for speaking up, speaking out. And for Chicago, you are right to demand the resources because our tax dollars are going to be illegal. And what are we getting in return for our tax dollars? Nothing. And this is not just for Chicago. This is across the nation for all of the mayors, all of the governors, all of the two that's running for president. This is for all of them. And you said you will be at that DNC convention. I believe it starts August the 19th. I'm so happy to hear that because if I could be there, I would be there with you. And as I said, again, I'm Louise Hicks, your host of this uh, podcast, Aim to Purpose Spiritual Empowerment Hour. Please subscribe, leave your comments, give it a like, give it a thumbs up because politicians' job is to work for citizens who vote for them, not these illegal migrants who own these politicians and they just drop them off and pay, pay money out to them, give them all the luxuries and put them in the black communities. So stop. Just stop and think. And the Black Chicago Democrats said they are not playing any more games. So Democrats, you have been put on notice. Republicans, you have been put on notice that our vote is not free. So Black men, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because we're dealing with one snake, remember, with two heads, the Democrats and the Republicans. And if we demand nothing, we get nothing. So we need to make sure that we are taking care of business. And as for Kamala Harris, 
having Megan the Stallion twerking in Atlanta at her rally, that was a disgrace from the nasty girl that calls herself Megan the Stallion, which is a male horse. That to me is amazing for a woman to call herself a male horse. But the way many of our enslaved mindsets are in this day and age, I'm not surprised, not at all. And again, I am proud of our black men because we know that these white supremacists are the powers that shouldn't be, are always thinking in their mind that they can overlook our black men by going through us. However, there are a lot of us women who have the common sense and the discernment to let you know we're not gonna put up with that. Black intelligent women are too intelligent to put up with that nonsense and fool talk where you think that you can come to us as black women and overlook our black men. No, no, no. No game playing here either. The women showed you that in the podcast I just did a few days ago. Now the men are definitely letting you know. They're putting you on notice. And I'm so happy and pleased that you all are not like Jim Clyburn. He's been in there, I think the man is pushing 90 or something. And he is totally out of touch with the reality of politics. He's out of touch or either he's bought, signed, sealed, and delivered. And if that be the case, please don't be listening to him. Listen to somebody that wants to empower you and your community and not treat you like a second-class citizen because you're not. We are brilliant, mel melanated people. And I always tell you, your power lies within you. Let it loose because your destiny is your command. With that said, Black men again, thank you, thank you, thank you. For all of my new subscribers, my supporters, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will be back. Stay tuned for the next video. With that said, please subscribe, share, like, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Much, much love.